Have you ever had a dentist talk you out of a cleaning? Well, I'm going to try. And I'm Dr. Ellie, and I am here to help you have the healthiest mouth ever and avoid unnecessary dental treatments. And in my opinion, you need to be thinking about dental cleanings in a more practical way than you probably do. Welcome back to the Longevity Deprocess channel. Today we'll learn from Dr. Ellie Phillips, a leading expert in dental health. She'd be exploring some surprising insights about dental health. Have you ever wondered if it's really okay to skip your regular dental cleanings? Dr. Phillips will reveal what you can do to skip regular cleanings. Plus, we'll reveal a sweetener that doesn't just prevent cavities, it can actually help heal your teeth and offer more benefits than you might expect. If you're curious about how to maintain oral health in unconventional ways, this is a video you won't want to miss. Stay tuned for Dr. Phillips' expert advice. Here's Dr. Phillips to tell us more. Oh, a quick favor. We'd greatly appreciate it if you can subscribe and like. This helps the YouTube algorithm recognize the value of our content and share it more widely. Everybody gets these cards and calls from the dentist or texts these days. Time for your recall, six month recall. And you go to the dentist and you have a cleaning because that's what they do. But do you need a cleaning? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Do you think it stops you from getting cavities? How does that happen? What's the science? And particularly when it comes to little children, I get really mad because some mothers pay for every child to have a cleaning. And do they need it? And is it beneficial? So I want to unpack all of that. And the first way that we need to look at this is to determine why are you having a cleaning? Do you need it? Well, if your dentist or your hygienist tells you, yes, you do need a cleaning because you have that crusty stuff that they call tartar, calculus, plaque in places around your mouth, then you do need to do something about that. The, the hygienist could clean it off your teeth, but believe me, it's going to come back and you don't have to have that. Plaque is a bacterial infection. Yeah, it's not a thing, it's not a substance. It looks like a substance in your mouth. But let's go down a microscope and start at the beginning. In your saliva, in the liquid in your mouth, are lots and lots of kinds of bacteria. I think they're now saying about 900 different kinds of bacteria. And most of them are really good and helpful. One particular kind of this bacteria is called Streptococcus mutans. What they do is travel around a mouth, say a mouth of an infant, before they have teeth, they can't land anywhere because the only place strep mutans can multiply is on the hard surface of a tooth, a non-shedding hard surface. They love teeth. And strep mutans consumes sugars. So if you have sugars in your saliva from the foods and drinks you eat or drink, Strep mutans will take those sugars and use it as an energy source to multiply and also to make sticky pads that glue strep mutans to your tooth and to other strep mutans. So they start lining up and maturing and then when they mature they're kind of little columnar, like little pencils under a microscope, lined up, stuck to each other and then they form these blankets and then the next blanket comes on top. And so they layer not only sideways, but thicken. And when they grow so thick, they can actually be seen. That is when you have plaque on your teeth. So if you scrape with your fingernail and get a soft, white, fluffy stuff off your teeth, and you were to look at that under a microscope, it is a seething mass of these bacteria that are all glued together with the sticky glucans from sugars that you have eaten and been eating or drinking. Now, yes, you can brush that stuff off your teeth, you can floss it off your teeth, but it's not going to go away because in your saliva, you have more strep mutans just waiting to land on your tooth. 
and it takes about 12 hours for a strep mutans to land on your tooth, call its buddies to come and join it, and start developing into this infected mess. So you have to brush your teeth every 12 hours, otherwise you are going to develop plaque. But that is an ongoing process that never gets better. The suggestion I would make is that you start using the strategies I recommend. You see, we knew in 1970 that if you consume a tiny amount of xylitol, this sugar from birch trees, at the end of meals, and then you don't eat or drink, over a period of a month, the xylitol will feed all the bacteria in your mouth, feed all the good ones, it will also feed those nasty strep mutans that are on your teeth. The thing is, strep mutans cannot use xylitol. It's the wrong shape. It's a five carbon sugar and it just like the wrong uh, cog in a wheel. It cannot use it for energy. And without energy, strep mutans can no longer make their sticky pads to stick to your teeth. So they become slippery. So you can wash them away when you clean your teeth at night with a mouthwash. The ones I recommend are particularly good for this. And your strep mutans, when plaque back forming bacteria, just disappear. And the good bacteria, when the, the teeth are clean and there are plenty of good bacteria, they will take the place of the ones that you just eliminated. And in a month, your teeth will be cleaned of strep mutans. No more will be landing on your teeth. If you have a good toothbrush, the kind I recommend, don't use soft, silly battery ones. Use the good manual brushes I recommend and with vigor, brush your teeth. You will stop these so-called kind of dying or non-useful plaque bacteria that just stick on your teeth. You will get them off your teeth and your teeth will look clean. They will feel shiny and smooth. And after six months, you won't have any more strep mutans even in your saliva. You will have got rid of the entire life cycle of strep mutans if you are consistent and regular in your use of xylitol. So no longer do you have the possibility of plaque. And you can actually test this. I test my own saliva periodically. I have zero plaque forming bacteria in my saliva. How cool is that? Well, if I go to a dentist and ask them, do I need a cleaning? I have no plaque. I have no calculus because calculus is calcified plaque deposits. You have to have plaque first for it to calcify. So I have no calcified plaque. And so there's nothing to clean off. And you too can get to that place. Is there an advantage? Well, the reason I don't have a cleaning and I haven't now had one for 40 years and all the way along I have been checked, I have gone to dentists for evaluations, why don't I want to clean my teeth? Because when you have healthy bacteria in your mouth and no plaque, the healthy bacteria form a very thin coating over your teeth and over your gums that is protective. It is like a bulletproof shield over your teeth. It stops your enamel wearing away. If you've been told you've worn your enamel away with how you brush your teeth, maybe you didn't have healthy protective biofilm. And that biofilm also, it protects you from the damage done by temperatures, the temperature fluctuation from hot coffee to a cold drink of water. The protection is in these, this biofilm layer made up of healthy bacteria that you cannot see. If you see it, it's infected. If it's healthy, it's just a clear film that you can feel on your teeth. Just as a slick, mmm, coating, almost like a waxy coating over your teeth, and that is protective. And I don't want that cleaned off just because somebody thinks they want to. Cleanings were invented or created or somebody came up with the idea of cleanings when they thought plaque was kind of like stale food with particles of things. It was a substance. It's not. It's an infection. And you don't get rid of an infection 
with a length of string or a brush. You, you have to get rid of that infection in a better way. You have to allow your body to really kind of get rid of the damage that's being done. So, have I talked you out of having cleanings? That could be tricky when you go for your next dental visit. You could ask why you need a cleaning, and then the next time, maybe you go and ask for, uh, they could do a test to see if you have plaque bacteria. And if you need a book to take with you, I have a book called Mouth Care Comes Clean that might be of interest to your dentist or your hygienist because it explains this. And if they have want to go online, there are studies done. Most of these studies were done in countries where there's socialized medicine. In, in England, they have done studies because, you know, they're looking at do you really need to go to the dentist every six months? And even the American Dental Association admit that risk factors, how much at risk of plaque are you? Because one of the great things is if you don't have plaque, you're not at risk for cavities. And if you don't have plaque, you won't form gingivitis, which is the first stage of gum disease. You basically are going to keep your teeth and mouth healthy by eliminating plaque. A whole new concept. And it's not done mechanically, it's done with xylitol. But in America, it's been virtually ignored. I think there was a big lobby probably for other artificial sweeteners. I don't know, maybe dentists just weren't interested or didn't understand. And uh, this is why I've spent so much time educating the public as far as I can about this incredible sugar. Today I want to talk about xylitol and explain that it's way more than just something for your teeth. It's really a health sugar. And although people who know me know that I have been about xylitol for over 20 years with my own company, I started that company mainly so I could share xylitol that wasn't available in the United States with my patients, my family, my friends, employees, and all of those guys have enjoyed xylitol now for over 20 years. I think what many people just do not know are the amazing effects of xylitol that go far beyond oral health. They're actually really good for general health and well-being. You see, xylitol was first discovered a long time ago. It's naturally found in plants like corn husks and also in fruits like raspberries and strawberries. It's mainly known because it is found in the wood of trees, birch trees and beech trees in particular. It also is in our human body. We have it in the tissues of our body, so our body, when we eat and consume xylitol, actually knows what to do with it. It was used over 150 years ago as a baking sugar, as a sugar for diabetics. And there's a book actually on Amazon written over 20 years ago, Sweeten Your Life the Xylitol Way. And this is just to show you that people have baked with xylitol. It's been known in China and Japan for decades. In countries, uh, Scandinavian countries, they understood in the about 60 years ago how to use xylitol with preschool children. And when they handed out in preschool, they found over 60 years of experience that these children don't get cavities. It's that simple. They also use it to improve the health of pregnant mothers and they found that then the mothers don't spread the bacteria to their children. So it's been a public health measure in Finland and other countries. The University of Turku in Finland was very central in a lot of these studies. But in America, it's been virtually ignored. I think there was a big lobby probably for other artificial sweeteners. I don't know, maybe dentists just weren't interested or didn't understand. And uh, this is why I've spent so much time educating the public as far as I can about this incredible sugar. It's very, very different from all sugar alcohols and from sugar. It's actually a five carbon molecule, which is completely unique and different from the six carbon molecules of sugar and other sugar alcohols. And this means that it behaves entirely differently from regular sugar. 
It's the opposite, in fact. It's actually good for teeth. You can eat some xylitol right before you go to sleep and it will improve your mouth health while you're sleeping. It helps to eliminate plaque. It's diabetic safe. And what's more, it has positive digestive results. In your gut, it actually promotes the bacteria that form butyrate. And that is a very good thing because butyrate improves the lining of your digestive system. So xylitol is well known in toothpaste. Perhaps we have studies to show that it's actually even more effective as mints and gum. As I was saying, we know that it's good for diabetics. It's low calorie. It's even somewhat recommended if you're trying to lose weight because it seems to enhance some hormones that make you feel satiated. That means you don't feel as hungry and you feel like more full. You don't want to eat more. So the best time to eat xylitol is right at the end of meals. Now, some people find that it upsets their gastric health. It isn't your health that's upset. It's simply that xylitol is an insoluble fiber and it pulls a little water to itself. So if you eat a lot of xylitol, all of a sudden, you certainly can have loose stools and you can feel that it's upset your digestive tract. Just go a little slower. I suggest that people who have sort of sensitive gastric problems start with one mint, that's half a gram, at the end of three meals a day and try there first. It's so good if you can get to the point where you have the adequate amount for oral health, which is six to 10 grams, because this will reduce plaque, promote good bacteria in your mouth, promote good bacteria in your gut, help you have more butyrate, which is good for your, in, actually the absorption of minerals from your gut lining, and your body will enjoy the benefits. Separate from that, they have done studies recently to show that after C-sections and any laparoscopic surgery, that a little xylitol can help get rid of the excess gases and get your body functioning well again, which any mother who's had a C-section knows can be really uncomfortable. Talking about pregnant women, there was a study in Malawi just in 2022 showing that thousands of women in Malawi, where they have the highest rate of preterm birth, actually found that taking two pieces of xylitol gum, they were able to reduce their risk of preterm birth. Another study in Japan in 2020 was done with because they actually knew that there was a supplement that could reduce cancer risk. And when they analyzed what was in the supplement, they actually found it contained a lot of xylitol. So their next studies were done in vitro, which means in the lab, as well as in vivo, in, in people, to see if xylitol could perhaps have the same effect on cancer suppression. And they are still doing studies and it's showing very positive results. Uh, now, besides that, the study also confirmed that xylitol seems to sensitize the cancer cells to chemotherapeutic drugs. So I believe, and I've always encouraged people during chemotherapy to keep using xylitol for their mouth health. But now we have some other reasons to believe that it could be really beneficial if you're undergoing chemotherapy, not just to help your mouth, but perhaps to improve the outcome of your treatments. And then that we will keep an eye on and let you know more as the studies unfold. So people with sensitivities are probably bemoaning these things. And I would once again encourage you, go very slowly, small amounts, and just take your time to acclimatize to xylitol. Now, saying all these wonderful things about xylitol, I absolutely have to inter interject here. Xylitol is not for pets, not for dogs. It can release significant amounts of insulin if dogs consume xylitol in a quantity or even a small amount. So don't give xylitol to animals, please. And all the Zelly's products, my products, carry that warning. Now, when it comes to what's the most effective, mints appear to be just as effective as gum. And sometimes I think in dry mouths, the mints are probably easier to use and maybe better. But that may be because people who use xylitol gum frequently chew it for too long. 
We really just want two to 10 minutes of chewing at the maximum. What happens is you stimulate a flow of saliva in your mouth. And after that, when you spit out the gum after two to 10 minutes, then don't eat or drink afterwards for an hour. Let that saliva heal your teeth. If you keep chewing and chewing and chewing, you'll diminish the benefits for your oral health. So ensure you're using 100% xylitol gum, if possible without glycerin. Use it, chew it, enjoy it, then stop. Next, watch the Dr. Ellie Phillips Club playlist for more information on Thanks more dental health. Thanks for watching health. Longevity Deprocessed. Hit like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on evidence-based longevity tips. Share your thoughts in the comments, your journey matters. Remember, small daily habits create big changes. Until next time, keep deprocessing for a healthier, longer future. Let's make this journey together.